What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we have got David Moyes' treble winning West Ham tactics. That is right, we've done the treble with these tactics replicated from West Ham's system. Absolutely incredible scenes. If you do enjoy the tactics on this channel, be sure to leave a like, drop a little subscription below and also keep the comments coming on the managers you want to see or any other tactics. Let's get into the testing phase and break down the Moyes masterpiece. First up, of course, is going to be West Ham, his current team, and we enjoyed one of the best seasons I've ever seen West Ham actually go through in football management. We did get a little bit lucky in terms of other teams not being at their best, but we, do you know what? I'm not going to complain one bit. We win the Premier League, the Europa League against Liverpool, and also the FA Cup against a very weak team in the final, which is going to be Nottingham Forest. Unfortunately, the Carabao Cup did humble us a little bit as Reading knocked us out, but do you know what? Not one bit of me has any ounce of regret. 72 goals scored in the league and only 35 goals conceded. Danny Ings scoring 18 goals overall, the highest top goal scorer out of anybody in the squad. Kurt Zuma picking up a 7.18 highest average rating. James Ward-Prowse picking up 25 assists in the season. And it is going to be Agard coming in with a 94% pass completion. Of course, if we look at this league table here, there are teams which aren't going to be at their best. So Liverpool lost five games. City lost eight. Arsenal lost eight as well. And obviously the teams below them as well. It was a ridiculously close battle. If you look here, 84 points, 81, 80 and 80. Only a four point difference from fourth to first place. And even in fifth place getting involved as well. So it was a very close Premier League season. Not one which possibly could happen time in time out but we got it done we literally won the treble with this West Ham team with no signings at all going over to the team stats we are going to feature in one of them obviously although we did win the league it was very very close so it doesn't mean we're going to dominate the stats as well that is going to be the most points per game at 2.21 possession wise we're not even going to be in the contending because at the end of the day we're not a possession based team and the other stats are going to be dominated by the other teams because they probably did play the better football but they didn't win the title so who's the real winner going over to the data we are going to go ahead and have a little look it's going to be 1.89 goals per game which is really really good with a more tactic you're not going to can you're not going to score two three goals a game necessarily all of the time especially with a team like west ham and what i'm going to say is we were incredibly defensively solid only conceding 0.92 goals per game having over 15 shots every single match a pass completion of 87.44 and a tackle in ratio of 77.79 now of course going over to the squad we are going to go ahead and have a little look we are going to see daddy ings picking up 18 goals jared bowen one of their best players by far with 15 14 for Antonio, Kudus, sensational player with 12, Kurt Zuma with 11, majority from set pieces, Ward Prowse with 9, we've got Corne coming in with 7, 7 for um, Suchek as well, and Ben Rama also picking up 6 goals in the rankings. Assist wise, the main man himself, what a goat this guy is. James Ward Prowse picking up 25, 17 for Ben, um, ben Rama for Bowen, 14 for Ben Rama, Kudus with 8. Seven for Creswell, Corne with five, five for Soufal as well, and Antonio. So again, we're not talking about tons and tons and tons and tons of goals or necessarily assists, but we are going to have a lot of players getting involved. And as you can see right here, majority of it is going to be done, obviously, well, from Ward Prowse in the midfield, but also from the wide areas with Bowen and Ben Rama. So really good to see a bit of wing play come in and actually have a bit of use in the team. And next up is going to be Sunderland, seventh place predicted in the Skybet Championship, but we come out and enjoyed a sensational season beating the likes of Leicester, Ipswich Town, Leeds, Southampton, all to the title. I'm with a five-point advantage as well. In terms of the Carabao Cup, also quite impressive getting to the quarterfinals, where unfortunately Manchester United were a little bit too much for us to deal with. We scored 105 goals in this division, ranking us the best, and conceded only 34, ranking us the best again. So in this division, we got the league title, but also we got the stats to prove a real league title winner. Jack Clark, sensational talent, and it is going to be Razon picking up 24 goals as joint top goal scorers. It's going to be Elise coming in with 7.16 on the highest average rating, and Bradley Dat coming in with 17 assists going over to them team stats we are going to feature in a fair few of them that is going to be four the most points per game at 2.28 the most goals at 105 the most shots at over 720 and the fewest goals conceded coming in at 34 just to show you as well possession wise just to make this very clear we're not going to be up there usually with any of these teams because we're not a possession-based tactic. Now, if you are playing one of the powerhouses, you might be up there because you've just got a very good team. But this tactic is all about that counter-attack and it performs so well playing this way. Going over to the data hub, of course, we are going to go and have a cheeky little look at 2.28 goals per game, broken the two-goal curse and conceded only 0.74. So very defensively solid, 
scoring lots of goals a game as well, and this time edging towards 16 shots every single game, a pass completion of 87.3, and a tackle win ratio of 78.3. It's really, really impressive, and these aren't even with the big teams. Now, let's test with some teams which has got a little bit better caliber of players in terms of the league that they're going to be in. I'm not saying the Celtic team is better than the West Ham team, but in their league, obviously the most dominant, and we had a incredible season, only losing two games out of a potential 38. We also won the Scottish Cup against Rangers, got knocked out to West Ham, funny enough, in the Europa League round of 16, and the semi-final, unfortunately, Rangers were a bit too much for us to obviously come up against. We scored 125 goals in the league, conceded only 24 and picked up zero red cards. This man right here, Big Kyogo, is one of the best players in this league by a mile. An absolute baller. 32 goals from him. Matt O'Reilly picking up 7.59 with the highest average rating. It's going to be Abada picking up 20 assists and it is going to be Gustav with a 94% pass completion. Unfortunately for Rangers, they were nowhere to be seen in the title race. Going over to the team stats, we are going to feature in a lot of them and this is what I mean about possession as well, but most points per game at 2.63 the most goals at 125 over 750 shots 760 to be exact fewer shots against we only faced 183 against us pass completion at 88 percent possession wise 63 percent of the ball so when you are playing with a slightly better team you are going to encounter good levels of possession it's not designed to do this but when you have the best players in the league you are naturally going to hold on to the ball better fewest conceded at 24 and the most clean sheets coming in at 18 now of course over to the data hub again we are going to be looking at over two goals, over three goals, 3.29 goals every single game, 0.63 conceded, bang on 20 shots every single match, a tackle win ratio of 78.83, which is very, very good, and a pass completion of 88.44. So obviously, the better team you are, the better stats you're going to receive, and this is a very accurate representation of what you can expect to do with sort of a top six team, top four team at its best. It absolutely cooks. Of course, you know I love my Turkish football, over to the Turkish division where we are going to test with Galatasaray one of the powerhouses in the division alongside of Fenerbahce and obviously Besiktas and we have come out and done the Turkish treble the Super League the Turkish Cup and the Turkish Super Cup doing the double over Fenerbahce or the treble if you include the league as well we scored 114 goals in the division conceded only 29 and just the one red card it's going to be former PSG star Maro Akali picking up 53 goals across all competitions and picking up a 7.43 highest average rating well it is going to be Tottenham reject and Dombele picking up 21 assists and Muslera picking up a 97% pass completion and again out of 38 games we only fail to win two of them which are going to be against Besiktas and Fenerbahce over to the team stats of course we are going to be featuring quite a fair few of them the fewest conceded at 29 we'd love to see that possession wise second place with 62% of the ball the fewest shots against at 258 the most shots for at over 720 140 14 goals and of course the most points per game at 2.58 now going over and unveiling this data hub bang on three goals again very rare you see a bang on number but three goals exactly 0.76 conceded per game over 19.2 shots every single match breaking into the 79s with a tackle win ratio and a pass completion of 88.74 this is what i love to see it's dominance. We really did get cooking with this Galatasaray team. This is going to be a 6-0 win in the league where we absolutely dominated the opposition. They've got a very good team, by the way, Galatasaray now. A ball inside into Ndombele. Down the middle a little bit, but we're going to take it. It's still a very good start to the game. Ndombele again into Tete, driving at the back line. He's going to cut it back into Ndombele, into Mertens. And that little combo between Ndombele and Mertens is absolutely lethal. Sanchez into Bobby on the right-hand side, into Ndombele, a.k.a. Patrick Vieira, into Tete, into into the top left-hand corner. And this team is absolutely cooking right now. Good play now from the left-hand side. Back into the middle. Into Mertens over the top. Into Akadi. And I'm not being funny. When you've got this much talent on the field, you've got to destroy teams. And that's exactly what we've done here. As we have got to have two more goals coming through. And Dombele into Tete. Into Akadi. One of or two of in this game. Of his 53 goals in the season. Tete back in the middle. Great first touch. He's going to play it out wide. Great first touch again. Driving inside. And an even better finish. And of course, we can't forget about this Scottish final against Rangers for all of the Celtic fans on this channel. A very comfortable 2 to win. A fantastic start. A great ball over and an even better finish past a very tired and beaten looking Jack Butland as O'Reilly puts the ball in the middle there, sort of in the middle, onto the edge, back into Riley. He's going to take a touch over the top into Rio 
and a first time rocket to finish off the game. Of course, now over to your favorite part of the video, the tactical breakdown. If you are enjoying so far, be sure to smash that like button. Let's try and get 70 likes on this video and subscribe. It's completely free. We're trying to push for 20k and I want to take a quick second to thank all of the names coming down the screen. Over 1,700 Patreons right now and you want to get your hands on it, be sure to click the link in the description below to gain access to over 10 perks, including access to all three of the wonderful variants in today's video. You also get access to the videos early and the tactics early. You get priority in the tactic requests and the rebuild requests. You get one-on-one -on -one tactical help. I tweak your saves and also access to the current Patreon giveaway, which is currently a copy of FM24 and any football shirt of your choice from this season, not a £9,000 retro one, just to clarify. But let's go over and break down the David Moyes West Ham tactic. So let's get things started then with the goalkeeper, who is simply going to be a goalkeeper on the defensive duty. Nice and simple. A fullback on the right-hand side, who is going to be on close down more and also tackle harder. Quite an aggressive fullback, but you have to see that in the system. A central defender on the right on tackle harder, and that's going to be exactly the same on the left with one additional thing, and that is going to be close down more, because in this system, I want one centre-back to really go out and put a challenge in, and one to still be quite aggressive, but not as aggressive. So, depending on which one you feel is your better centre-back, would be the area I have this on, but have one of them on close down more to sort of be the stopper in the team. On the left-hand side, is going to be a fullback on attack. He's going to be on cross-aim centre, run wide with the ball, close down more, and again, tackle harder. So, a very aggressive, high-intensity back four to be playing. This is going to be a central midfield player on defend, on pass at shorter, close down more, and also tackle harder. This is obviously going to be where Paqueta does play. Now, I know in real life, he has played a few games out on the left, but in this game, when you do simulate, he goes into the midfield. So, that's where he did play this season. Next to him is going to be a box-to-box -box on support, on get further forwards, and also move into the channels to really sort of make this midfield quite progressive and attacking. On the right-hand side is going to be an inside forward on shoot more often, stay wider, and close down more. Shoot more often is because it is Jared Bowen, and that guy can put the ball in the back of the net. So, I wanted to allow him to have an opportunity to do so. In the middle is going to be the advanced playmaker on support, simply on move into channels. And on the left-hand side is now going to be on support, who is also going to be on stay wider and close down more. So again, you notice that on this side, the fullback is going to get a lot more forward and really contribute. Whereas on this side, the inside forward is a lot more attack and minded and a fullback isn't as committed to going forward. And to finish it off, the advanced forward, who is simply going to remain unchanged, unhinged, and attack on the default. Nice and simple. Let's go to the team instructions. So all done off a clean slate, positive, a positive mentality. We are going to get things going right away with a wide attacking whip, pretty common sense with any West Ham tactic. We're going to pass the ball into the space so we really make use of those runs being made from the players. We're going to overlap left and overlap right. We're not going to have play out from the back because we've got zero ball playing defenders and I don't really see them doing it that often. We're going to go with standard on the passing directness alongside side of a higher tempo really going to get that thing nice and simple nice and locked under and we are going to go with floated crosses now this depends if you've got a you know if you're signing a striker who has got no aerial ability at all then obviously won't don't, don't go with a floated go with a mixed or go with a low but if you can having that height in the box really does help with a system like this and lastly to finish off this tab is of course going to be hit early crosses if there's one thing we know about west ham they love to get the ball in the box so we're going to do it but of course it is a very counter attacking style so we are going to go with regroup when we have lost the ball meaning both midfielders are going to come back and track back the front three and also the striker and of course since it is a counter attack we are going to counter meaning everyone apart from the two center backs are going to look forward to go back now this isn't a bad thing because when we've lost the ball they're all going to come back on themselves anyway so it's a really aggressive counter-attacking style which catches a lot of the top teams off guard we've already seen a couple in real life on the big teams fall to the west ham trap we're going to distribute to the center backs as well while taking short goal kicks <laughs> lastly a few instructions but you should know if you don't get to know the mid block line of engagement with the standard defensive line is going to be fairly common sense we're going to trap the ball outside we're going to step up more with that standard line we're going to get stuck in we're going to prevent short goalkeeper distribution and we're going to have more often on the trigger press that's going to complete your default variant, but do stick around because you need the attacking and defensive variants to make this completely work. Trust me, it's worth sticking around. Let's get into them. But of course, let's not forget about the two finals we won with West Ham. This 2-0 win against Liverpool, both goals coming in extra time. They did go down to 10 men as well, very early on actually. That was, who was it? 
it was Endo in the 45th minute. Not a nice time to get sent off, if any time is nice at all. Through to Antonio, into Danny Ings. A great first goal and one more goal to finish it off. The last kick of the game almost over the top into Danny Ings. Liverpool clearly attacking and a bit exploited at the back now. Into Danny Ings, right past Becker. Love it. And though it's not exciting, but still, it's a cup final, the FA Cup final against Nottingham Forest in a very sort of close game, actually. A 1-0 win, and it comes from a moment of magic from Ward Prowse. Touch, pause, and engage, baby. And now we're going to go over the attack and variant, the perfect tactic to take into a game if you are feeling yourself or you're chasing a game, you're a goal down. And it does, it's going to look a little bit different. I've got to explain why. It's fairly common sense, but you will understand it as well. But we are going to go with a goalkeeper who remains unchanged. The fullback on the right is going to be on close down more and tackle harder. And on the left hand side is also going to be another fullback, both on attack, on cross aim center, run wide, close down more and tackle harder. So the only change which actually gets made. Made to this back line is this fullback on the right is now going to be on attacking the box to box is going to be on support still on get further forwards and move into channels the central midfield player goes on to support now simply on take more risks and this is where things get very interesting so i'll explain at first so basically the thought process behind this is the shadow striker is naturally going to push up into almost a two up top system and the box to box is going to push up and almost replace the shadow striker but play on the other side so it does become a very attacking system System, which almost only leaves one in midfield so it's very attacking very forward thinking and it gets the job done the inside forward on the left is going to be on stay wider and close down more and the inside forward on the right is still going to be on shoot more often stay wider and also close down more the shadow striker is simply going to be on attack and the advanced sword remains unchanged so it's a 4 2 3 one but in the game it shapes up a lot differently trust me team instruction wise the mentality is going to go to attacking we're going to keep wide when it comes to the attack and width the only change here is actually going to be the be more expressive simple as that we're still going to have the maxed out tempo but the be more expressive is really going to be the big change here to really let them play have a bit of free roman a bit of expressiveness let them go out there and put on a show we're trying to get a goal man transition nice and simple distribute quickly is going to be the only change a few changes to the out of possession no mid block we're going to go with the standard line the high press line of engagement much more often prevent short goalkeeper distribution because we've got a lot of players up the field now get stuck in and also step up more so a very aggressive way of the david moyes ball system lastly the defensive variant for my viewers that are playing as a very big underdog team maybe a luton for example or maybe you're just trying to defend a game out in the 90th minute 80th minute this is the bad boy you want to download so the goalkeeper is going to be on the default the fullback on the right and the left are both going to be defaulted so very very restricted fullbacks in this system now a central defender on the left and the right is going to be simply copy and pasted so we're going to be a lot more of a drop-off team now we're not going to have a center back going out to really eagerly put in a challenge because we're just going to sit back and let the team come to us and eventually block their shots and then hopefully hit on the counter-attack the center midfield comes back on defend on pass it shorter close down more and also tackle harder and we introduce a ball in the midfield player who is simply going to be on support to really secure that midfield area an inside forward on the right is going to be on support on shoot more often stay wider and close down more and on the left hand side it's going to be exactly the same so the reason why We've got shoot more often now on both of these wide players is because we're not going to have as many attacks on their goal. So I want to make sure we're having shots because as long as your players have got good finishing, good shooting statistics, hopefully we can at least get a set piece from it. So having shots at goal is going to be key in this counter-attacking system. In the midfield, the shallow striker goes, an advanced playmaker comes in on support or move into channels and the advanced sword is going to be on attack. But again, same theory goes, shoot more often. So we're making sure we've still got a little bit about us when it comes to the counter-attacks. Team instruction wise, oh boy, there's a big change. The balance mentality is going to come in. Wide is going to stick. Pass into space is going to stick. We're still going to overlap left. We're going to overlap right. But on this occasion, things are going to change. So we're going to go slightly more direct. We're going to lower the tempo a little bit. The time wasting is going to be set to frequently. We're going to play for set pieces. Make sure you've got good set pieces obviously enabled for this. Otherwise, it's a useless instruction. We're going to hit the early crosses still with the floated crosses option. So a much more of a lower tempo, more more direct approach transition it's going to be exactly the same but the key difference is going to be that slow the pace down 
time wasting really. Arsley, very defensive, very negative, but sometimes ugly football gets your results and this is hopefully what it's going to do. So the lower defensive line, the mid-block line of engagement, standard on that trigger press. We're still going to prevent short goalkeeper distribution because we are going to have the advanced forward still up the field. We're going to drop off more and we're going to trap outside when it comes to the pressing trap. And that is going to give you guys free variants of David Moyes' West Ham for the current season. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video as much as it's been requested because it had a lot of requests. If you have, be sure to leave a like, drop a little subscription below, keep the comments coming on what you want to see. And also, if you are interested, be sure to check out the Patreon where you can obviously download all three of these variants and save yourself a bit of time. But have a great rest of your day and I'll see you boys in the next video.